interesting because so many of my entrepreneurial mates said to me when I did my MBA, that'll be the end of you. And I said, what are you talking about? They said, ah, oh, you know, you, you'll become too risk adverse if you do an MBA. And I must say, I do disagree with that because I did it and I loved it. And it turned on parts of my brain, which I didn't think it would. And what it taught me was interconnectivity. It really taught me interconnectivity. Can you elaborate on that, what you mean by that? Okay. I, I know what you mean, but I... So when you make a decision in finance, it's going to impact marketing. When you make a, discussion, a decision in marketing, it could impact upon logistics. When you make a, a distribution, if you make a, impact, a decision on uh, logistics and distribution, it could impact upon HR. If you make a, a decision on HR, it could impact legals. I really understood at a much deeper level, what I would call interconnectivity. Yeah. So nothing happens in isolation. As much no, as much Nothing happens in isolation. As much that's as the, we want it to, point. as much as we'd like it to, as much as we want to put things into neat little buckets, the world doesn't work that way. That's right. Right? And it's the gaps. It's the grey areas. It's all that kind of stuff, which is never that clear. But, <laughs> and it taught me that. Yes. And I must say, I... I you know, I was a bit nervous, believe me. I hadn't studied anything for a long time. Had you, because you, did you finish uni before no, you went I, see, to I was in second year of a three-year property degree. So, yes, you would argue that, yeah, you'd never really been to uni other than yeah, and the uni bar in the time. first year and, and then maybe a couple of lectures in the second. Correct, correct. Yeah. And that's when my kind of father uh, passed away. Mm. And I just kind of thought, right, got to get to work, man. And the... So, uh, but it was good. For me, it was kind of a, um, a sense of, well, I can do it. Uh, but I did learn a lot of really good stuff. And I met some great people. I just met this fantastic group of people. It's really interesting. I, uh, sim we, we, it's, I didn't know that you went and did your MBA at that time. And I mean, I went and did my MBA four or five years ago. After, after I kind of failed, I went, there's, surely there's something I've got to go. There's something I'm missing here. You know, and I'd never been to uni in my life. I, you know, I went to college and, and studied, um, you know, culinary school and hotel management school, which is like a university, but never been to uni. And then I went. I went. And everyone looked at me and said, "What are you doing?" Same thing. Like, this is it. There's no entrepreneur, and you left. And it was one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I really, really enjoyed it because it did it unlocked my mind, and really gave me the finance skills that I had lacked. Because, and I, and I did really well in accounting and finance because it was just like, I'm like, I really need to understand how to read these financial statements and I need to know them back to front. I need to understand my balance sheet. I need to understand my, my paper profit through a P&L and I need to stop looking at that paper profit. So what's my cash position all the time? And one of the things that I teach or, or at least work with all my clients around the world now is the first thing I say to them, let's just do a little financial literacy and they all shit this whole state literally go what are you talking about so let's just understand talk me through your balance sheet and some of these people run 50 100 million dollar businesses and they're like oh i go to the cfo for that and i'm like no you won't never again will you go to the cfo because the cfo could be giving you the wrong information and if you don't understand you know your current assets and current liabilities that are due and payable within that 12 month period you may have a financial problem coming and staring at you, oh, you know, and you'd know this because you held a lot of inventory, right? So Christian, we, we had about $4 million worth of inventory on the balance <laughs> sheet. And you know, I was in the fashion industry and I used to say my inventory is like fruit and veg. It's perishable. It is because right. it goes out of fashion. If it goes out of fashion, it's worthless. <laughs> Utterly worthless. Yeah, brilliant. I love loving this conversation. So it was not the most, you know, uh, and retail businesses are interesting because mm. you don't have a lot of real property. You don't have a lot of really highly secure assets on the on the good side of your balance sheet, right? You've got what I call transient assets. Yep. You know, and I look at it this way. If the bank came in and put a Larry of last resort value on my inventory, what would I get for it? Oh. I get 10 cents of the dollar if I'm yeah. lucky. I was right? going to say 10%. You know, so it's so I always knew it, and it, it it's really so financial literacy. I God, I'm so with you on this. Financial literacy is, is not the numbers; it's what they're telling you. Yeah, it's kind of like getting under the bed sheets. It's like what's going on under there. Yeah, and the understanding that interrelationship between your balance sheet, your P and L, your cash flow, your intangibles—I mean, everything—is yeah. so important. 
I mean, um, the big one I always say to people is understand your payables and your receivables yeah. and check your cash at bank every single day. Yeah. And no matter how the size of my clients now, they will do it. And they're just like, Christian, that's really changed my life. And I'm like, I know. Remember the resistance you gave me the first time I told you to do that? Mm-hmm. But when I told you that I wouldn't work with you unless you did it every day and I quizzed you. And the irony of it is I do it for all my clients too. I have all the access to all the zeros and the mild accounts and... I, I literally sit there and they always say, how is it that you remember all of our numbers? I said, because it's habitual for me now. So I remember my own and my own companies. And so learning another 10 or 12 isn't really going to be a problem for me. And at the end of the day, you're also variable that you kind of understand. But if you know how much money you've got in your bank account, you know your receivables and you know your payables, you, and you're, it fascinates me how many people don't do that, Martin. And they just, sometimes they just, and you whether they're great sales people that start, you know, how many entrepreneurs have we met along the journey? And I used to be that entrepreneur. I never cared. I cared about a paper profit. You know, when I was making like five, six million dollars a year from restaurants and bars, I was like, oh, this is great. And then I'm like, hang on a sec, where's the money? Yeah. And money wasn't there. Too much in inventory. Too much month at the end of the money. <laughs> you heard that too one? Many, too many lunches. 